There are a lot of reasons why people build tiny houses, and one of the most common is to reduce their environmental footprint. Today we've traveled to Colorado to meet an inspiring young woman who has done a fabulous job of building her very own eco haven on wheels. Hey Isabel. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is a great looking tiny house. Thank you, thanks for coming out. Tell me a little bit about how you actually came to be building a tiny house. So I studied permaculture um, in college and did a lot of natural building. And when I moved back home, I wanted to build a tiny house. I kind of figured that I could be paying rent for about two and a half, three years or live at home and just put that towards a tiny house. I did a course in California where we were studying bioregionalism and permaculture and living off the grid. And so that really inspired me uh, to live more naturally and a more simple lifestyle that's more connected to nature. So when I uh, finished that course, I got really passionate about tiny homes. I had been following the movement for about four or five years and started researching and uh, looking at different materials and really what was available to me in my area and started uh, kind of a process of design but also integrating a lot of reclaimed materials and as that process continued my dad pushed me to do a building plan a materials list and really hone in on my focus for the house and the materials that I wanted to use and so as I uh, investigated that and continued uh, my dad became really into the project and very supportive and so we started going out and uh, finding materials together. You know, I worked full time at, and worked mostly nights. And so sometimes he'd be working on the tiny house and I wouldn't be here. And we had lots of nights um, where I would get home from work and we would be building until midnight or 1 a.m. And now I'm so grateful to live in this space and to know like how much love and energy has gone into it and, and that I'll have it, you know, for the rest of my life and, and that I built it with my dad. It's interesting that you come from a permaculture background as well, because permaculture and tiny houses have a lot in common, don't they? Yeah, I mean, first of all, like the gray water system, living off the grid, I'm hoping to get solar in the next two weeks. And so being able to have kind of like a closed loop system where everything is working in unison uh, works really well with tiny homes and just having like a lower impact environmentally. And tell me about the materials you've used to construct this. In the beginning, I wanted to build just with all reclaimed, but I kind of decided that I wanted to have a really uh, efficient, high-performing tiny house, um, one that could function in any climate. Uh, so the outside exterior is, this is all redwood that I got from a reclaimed building place. Uh, same with this corrugated metal here. And I also have some cedar trim and cedar on the ends of the house that are from uh, the inside of a woman's house that I got off Craigslist. Uh, so I also love that this house has, you know, the materials have different stories and, uh, and that I can see that every day. Why was it important for you to use green build materials? So for me, just thinking in the beginning about a tiny house, you know, having less of an environmental impact, less of a footprint to build uh, with materials that will never biodegrade, toxic materials that could off gas into my space or that are toxic when being installed seemed really hypocritical to me. And so I wanted to think of the life cycle of the house um, and that it would be taken down at some point, whether that's 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, it's gonna be taken down. And I just didn't want all the materials to be in a landfill. So I have steel framing, which is 100% recyclable. It's 50% lighter than wood, so I saved about 1,000 pounds on my build. What did you actually use to insulate? So I used mineral wool, so basalt rock and steel wool. It has a tiny bit of formaldehyde in there, but it can biodegrade and you can just cut it with a bread knife. Something that was really exciting to me was to have work parties on this house. And so I had an all female insulation installation party. Uh, we had about 12 women in here, just cutting it with bread knife and installing it, tucking it into all the nooks and crannies. And it was insulated in about five hours. Wow. Mostly all of it, yeah. And so just to know like how many people have contributed to my house uh, is really special to me. So what size is the tiny house actually? So it's on a 22 foot trailer and it's, you know, eight and a half feet wide. And so the inside is about seven feet, four inches wide. And then it's 13 feet, four inches tall. 
um, but then it has a two foot cantilever off the back of the trailer. I wanted to do that so that I could have a storage shed. And so that's about five feet tall by seven and a half feet wide and two feet deep. And then I have an extra two feet in my loft. Well, can we have a look inside? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. This home is beautiful. Thank you. You've really managed to pack it with so much character. Yeah, I feel like everything has a story um, in this house and I love being around that every day. You know, like the wood that I found at a reclaimed place. And yeah, I mean, my propane stove, I traded with a man who had it and I had a pot belly wood stove. And I just realized that it would take up too much space. It was gonna create too much heat. And he had built an off-grid cabin without insulation and the Dickinson didn't heat it up, but it's perfect for here. It's really toasty. And then I have a desk, which is also um, an off-grid sewing machine. And it's a pedal sewing machine and it's from 1914, I think. And I was able to take the main cabinet top off and put a, a smaller one on top so that it fit in the space. And so yeah, it doubles up. I mean, one of my favorite permaculture principles is that everything has to have multiple functions. And that was something that I felt really inspired about with tiny homes in particular. So like my couch, for example, it's a couch obviously, uh, but it has storage under the entire couch. It also, um, the backs pull out. And so I have uh, storage behind those. And then actually this front piece pulls all the way out so that I can have um, like a full, almost a queen size guest bed. And you've just built everything with such gorgeous wood as well. Yeah, I think it's such a small space that I was definitely conscious of putting too many different types of wood in. I have a lot of dug fur, so my flooring I got out of a local art museum. Uh, they took it out and it's 80 year old Douglas fur from Washington and I lived in Washington so it's kind of like my homage to the Pacific Northwest but also you know to where I live now and so we took it out, denailed it, cleaned it up, planed it and then I got one of those stand up sanders at Home Depot and did you know probably five hours on it and then sealed it and so I love that that's on the floor it has character you know it's old wood that has a whole new life um, new story and then it's also on my stairs as my stair treads and then we took the tongue and groove off and we turned it on end and made it into a countertop butcher block. Your kitchen design is really nice and open as well. Thanks. Yeah, I have seen a lot of tiny house designs and I really wanted my house to be light and open and have a lot of space for people to be here. I really like to encourage community and have dinner parties and, uh, you know, preserving, making jam, things like that. And so, yeah, I wanted enough space between here so that like you're not bumping into each other. Um, this is a little bit shallower than the other side. And you can tell that you've also got a ton of storage space in this area as well. I really do. I have more than enough. You know, I have pantry and uh, dishes, cabinet, lots of clothing storage and my stairs and a decent sized stove for cooking. And then your bathroom is behind us here. Yep, just behind this pocket door. It's pretty cozy, uh, but it fits everything. I have, you know, a sink in here and the nature's head composting toilet. So uh, another green building aspect of this house is this Lunos ventilation unit. Uh, so it's continuously refreshing the air in this space, uh, fresh air from the outside. And living in Colorado, it gets really cold. And so it has a heat recovery core. So if it's zero degrees outside, it will bring it in at about 62 degrees. And it also acts as a bath fan. So I can just turn it on exhaust mode um, if I take a steamy shower. And yeah, I feel it's kind of like uh, the bubbles in a fish tank. You know, it's keeping me breathing and, and in fresh air, healthy air. And... Um, I have my, this actually open, so I have my tankless water heater behind there so I can access that. Even a little bathtub. And a bathtub, yeah. Um, that was definitely hard to find and it took a lot of research. It took about a year of like creatively thinking of what I could do. Could I make a bathtub out of a horse trough or a whiskey barrel? or even a wheelbarrow. I was just thinking of everything. And, you know, it kind of boiled down to like what was quick and easy to clean. And also um, I have a big dog and so I wanted to be able to wash her in the winter in there. And I can fit in there too. It's it's fine, you know. It's not like luxurious, but it's, it's enough. And can we have a look upstairs? Yeah, absolutely. 
This is so nice. I really like the shape of the window there. Thanks, yeah, that was a Craigslist find. I wanted to bring a little bit of curves into the house and I can look out and see the trees. And I actually had a woodpecker pecking on my house the other day. And so I hid on the wall and, and got to watch it for a while out there. And how are you finding a sleeping loft? I love it, yeah. One of my design aspects was that I wanted a lot of headspace in here. Um, and I actually did a very uh, kind of minimal mattress. So I have like a slat system and then I have tatami uh, Japanese grass mats to add a little bit of ventilation. And then it's just 100% botanical latex. So just really clean, toxic free. And the entire system, bed system, is about seven inches tall. And so I have uh, maximized my headspace in here. So how long have you actually been living in the house now? So I've been living in here for about four or five months uh, throughout the summer. I wanted to build a tiny house that was really healthy for me, that was a really positive environment. And I think that overall, the tiny house has just brought a lot of like beauty and satisfaction into my life. And it's a place that I wanna be all the time. It's hard for me to leave just because I'm so comfortable here. It's it's warm and the aesthetic is exactly how I want it. And it simplified my life and made me able to focus on other things uh, because I have control over my living environment and and the comfort that's there. So all in, what would you estimate this build project actually cost you? Well, since I did a lot of labor, my dad as well, and had work parties, all in all, once I have solar, it'll be about 43 grand. And what are your plans for the future now? I mean, my dream, which I think is a lot of people's dreams, is to go in and buy land with some friends and to be able to have a tiny house community. And so we'll see if, you know, laws change and if that can become uh, legal. But yeah, I'm hoping to have kind of an intentional community where everyone still has their own space, but we work together, garden together, do kind of a permaculture um, style homestead. Well, to me, that sounds like a really amazing plan and I'm sure you're going to make it happen. Thank you so much for sharing your home with me as well. Thanks adult. for coming. It's nice to have you here. Isabel has made some really great decisions with the construction of this home. Already just living in a tiny house helps to greatly reduce your environmental footprint. But when you're really conscious of where materials are sourced and the lifespan of those materials, it goes a long way to really helping to build a sustainable future. And that is definitely a positive direction for us to be moving in.